In mathematics, especially in applications of linear algebra to physics, the Einstein notation or Einstein summation convention is a notational convention that implies summation over a set of index terms in a formula, thus achieving notational brevity. As part of mathematics it is a notational subset of Ricci calculus. However, it is often used in applications in physics that do not distinguish between tangent and cotangent spaces. It was introduced to physics by Albert Einstein in 1916. Introduction equals statement of convention equals according to this convention when an index variable appears twice in a single term and is not otherwise defined it implies summation of that term over all the values of the index so where the indices can range over the set 1 2 3 is reduced by the convention to the upper indices are not exponents but are indices of coordinates coefficients or basis vectors for example x2 should be read as x2, not x squared, and typically would be equivalent to the traditional. In general relativity, a common convention is that, the Greek alphabet is used for space and time components, where indices take values 0, 1, 2, 3, the Latin alphabet is used for spatial components only, where indices take values 1, 2, 3, in general, indices can range over any indexing set, including an infinite set. This should not be confused with a typographically similar convention used to distinguish between tensor index notation and the closely related but distinct basis independent abstract index notation. An index that is summed over is a summation index, in this case I. It is also called a dummy index since any symbol can replace I without changing the meaning of the expression, provided that it does not collide with index symbols in the same term. An index that is not summed over is a free index and should be found in each term of the equation or formula if it appears in any term. Compare dummy indices and free indices with free variables and bound variables. Equals application equals, Einstein notation can be applied in slightly different ways. Typically, each index occurs once in an upper and once in a lower position in a term. However, the convention can be applied more generally to any repeated indices within a term. When dealing with covariant and contravariant vectors, where the position of an index also indicates the type of vector, the first case usually applies. A covariant vector can only be contracted with a contravariant vector, corresponding to summation of the products of coefficients. On the other hand, when there is a fixed coordinate basis, one may choose to use only subscripts. See below. Vector representations. Equals superscripts and subscripts versus only subscripts equals, in terms of covariance and contravariance of vectors, upper indices represent components of contravariant vectors, lower indices represent components of covariant vectors. They transform contravariantly, resp. Covariantly, with respect to change of basis. In recognition of this fact, the following notation uses the same symbol both for a vector and its components, as in where v is the vector and v are its components, w is the covector and we are its components. In the presence of a non-degenerate form, one can raise and lower indices. A basis gives such a form, hence when working on Rn with a Euclidean metric and a fixed orthonormal basis, one can work with only subscripts. However, if one changes coordinates, the way that coefficients change depends on the variance of the object, and one cannot ignore the distinction. See covariance and contravariance of vectors. Equals mnemonics equals, in the above example, vectors are represented as now, 1 matrices, while covectors are represented as 1a, n matrices. When using the column vector convention, upper indices go up to down. Lower indices go left to right. Covariant tensors are row vectors that have indices that are below. Co below row, vectors can be stacked side by side. Hence the lower index indicates which column you are in. You can stack co vectors top to bottom. Hence the upper index indicates which row you are in. Equals abstract description equals, the virtue of Einstein notation is that it represents the invariant quantities with a simple notation. In physics, a scalar is invariant under transformations of basis. In particular, 
a Lorentz scalar is invariant under a Lorentz transformation. The individual terms in the sum are not. When the basis is changed, the components of a vector change by a linear transformation described by a matrix. This led Einstein to propose the convention that repeated indices imply the summation is to be done. As for covectors, they change by the inverse matrix. This is designed to guarantee that the linear function associated with the covector, the sum above, is the same no matter what the basis is. The value of the Einstein convention is that it applies to other vector spaces built from V using the tensor product and duality. For example, the tensor product of V with itself has a basis consisting of tensors of the form. Any tensor in can be written as the dual of has a basis E1, E2. N which obeys the rule. Where is the Kronecker delta? As the row column coordinates on a matrix correspond to the upper lower indices on the tensor product. Common operations in this notation, in Einstein notation, the usual element reference for the MTH row and NTH column of matrix A becomes. We can then write the following operations in Einstein notation as follows. Inner product, using an orthogonal basis, the inner product is the sum of corresponding components multiplied together. This can also be calculated by multiplying the covector on the vector. Vector cross product, again using an orthogonal basis the cross product intrinsically involves summations over permutations of components. Where? And is the Levi Civita symbol? Based on this definition of, there is no difference between and but the position of indices. Matrix multiplication, the matrix product of two matrices and is equivalent to trace, for a square matrix, the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements, hence the sum over a common index. Outer product, the outer product of the column vector by the row vector yields an mar, n matrix A. Since I and J represent two different indices, there is no summation and the indices are not eliminated by the multiplication. Raising and lowering indices, Given a tensor, one can raise an index or lower an index by contracting the tensor with the metric tensor. For example, take the tensor, one can raise an index. Or one can lower an index. See also, Ricci calculus, tensor, abstract index notation, bra euroket notation, Penrose graphical notation, Kronecker delta, Levi Civita symbol. Notes, this applies only for numerical indices. The situation is the opposite for abstract indices. Then, vectors themselves carry upper abstract indices and covectors carry lower abstract indices, as per the example in the introduction of this article. Elements of a basis of vectors may carry a lower numerical index and an upper abstract index. References Bibliography, Cuts of, L.P., Einstein Rule, in Haswinkel, Mikiel, Encyclopedia of Mathematics, Springer, ISBN 978-1-55608-010-4. External links, Rawlings, Steve. Lecture 10, Einstein Summation Convention and Vector Identities. Oxford University.